did was with Matt from Rapido, who's going to go through a whole bunch of different uh, new products that they have and new announcements that they have. Uh, I do want to make a note that uh, there were a lot of people at this event, so uh, you do hear some background noise, but I have boosted the audio as much as possible so you can hear our interview. So sit back and enjoy. All right, so we're here with Matt from Rapido. Matt, nice to see you. And he's going to show us some of the new products that we have coming up. So Jerry, come on in, and uh, Matt, take a break. Right. So some of our new announcements that we just announced today, actually, uh, we have our new InScale Pro Core 5820. It's a it's a miniature clone of our HO scale version. And then we have the Santa Fe RR56 and 660 and 61 reefer. Uh, again, it's a clone of our HO scale version. Those were just announced today. We're taking pre-orders now, and those. Those orders close, um, I believe, November 15th or December 15th. I'm sorry, I have to check. That's anyway, all right. Um, then, of course, we have our large HO scale Procore 5820. Those just arrived in Markham, and those will be shipping out uh, this coming week to dealers and distributors. Nice. Um, of course, you've seen the N scale B100 box card. Those are out and available now. So uh, check with your uh, favorite hobby shop. Cool. Now, of course, I'm a big steam guy, so I'm liking this steam engine right here. Right. So this is the Canadian Pacific D10 steam locomotive. And those, uh, I believe that the orders have just closed, and they are actually starting the injection and molding process at the factory. So those should be coming in the next year or so. Nice. I was talking to someone. He said that uh, they're also, there's a, a Royal Hudson scheme as well as a black one. We will be getting them, so I'm excited right. to see right. that. Um, and these are our northeastern cabooses. Uh, the orders are still open on those uh, to place pre-order. They will be closing later this year and start production in about December, something like that. Nice. So, now, you, you were talking earlier about the new Amtrak cabbage units as well. Right. So these are a uh, new announcement for today is the Amtrak cabbage units. Um, this is the second run, different paint schemes, different road numbers. Um, so get your orders in on those, I believe. Uh, yeah, so here's the order deadline in our very professional uh, uh, flyer. <laughs> Here. Uh, order deadline is January 16th on those units. Very nice. Those look really cool. And then uh, with uh, the F, uh, the cabbage rather, we have just made a new announcement this weekend of the uh, Metro F40 PHM 2s, better known as the Winnebagos, um, and all sorts of different variations and paint schemes on those, including the Metro Heritage unit for CB and Q, the Metro Faded scheme, the Metro. Operation Lifesaver, and then your traditional Metro Blue Ski. Nice. Um, and then some of our soft announcements are preliminary, still in development, still mining information to get the models correct, is we have announced softly the uh, commuter E8s for the Chicago area, so BN, uh, Metra, I believe, and possibly Amtrak with all the HEP equipment. So they've got all the louvered uh, uh, panels on the rear end for the HEP generators and all the piping and everything on, on the roofs. Cool. And then to go with that, because you need cars to pull behind your commuter E8, Absolutely. is we have just made another soft announcement of the CB and Q version Metra gallery cars. Cool. Uh, those are still in some development, uh, getting a little bit more information. But please note, it's CB and Q versions only. So okay. CB, Q, BN, and then Metra based off the CB and Q car. Gotcha. So we're not doing Milwaukee, Rock Island yet. I gotcha. Uh, we're, we're working on these. We want to get these right. We want to see how sales or anything like that before we jump into the, the Milwaukee Rock Island coast. Nice. And I guess based on how well these do is based on how well you're going to do the other stuff. Exactly. Very cool. Nice. And I know we have a whole bunch of deals happening over here. Yep. What do we got here? So these are the um, e and E8 locomotives from our first announcement. Um, and those, I believe, are on their way. They should be shipping very soon. They're about five weeks away, I'm told. Nice. Okay. And then, uh, of course, the Amtrak 4316, that's available now. That was a special uh, uh, um, um, uh, heritage. Heritage isn't the right word, but for the uh, Amtrak 50th anniversary. Nice. And we, I know we actually did just get those in the store, so I know those are going to be hot. Right. Very cool. And then I, I saw you talking about this sleeper car over here, which seemed really cool. So that is the Bud Slumber Coach. Um, I wish I could tell you more about it. I'm not a passenger car door. <laughs> well, um, no, it seems like a really nice car, and the amount of detail that's right. happening in here, as you can see all the different lights and the different seats and everything, I mean, that is a truly gorgeous looking like car there. Right, so each each little roomette has its own light in it, oh, cool. uh, so it's not just one light shining in the whole car. Um, this is the de-skirted version. 
because um, I know that there is a version with skirts on it, but the de-skirted had more uh, road names purchased the car, so it was just a, a more viable option for us to produce that version of the car. That's awesome. And those, uh, that order deadline, I believe, is later this year, too, in November, I think, but it's coming up soon. All right, that's a cool car, especially if you're a passenger car guy, you need some of that. Right. Very cool. And behind that, we have some of our X3 tank cars. Um, I think the orders have closed. I believe those are in production right now. Okay. So this is uh, really neat looking, mm -hmm. though. It seems like a whole have a whole bunch. Actually, you said there's like a tank car expert uh, guy here. Yeah. Right behind. Me. Oh, he, he's right behind us. Yeah. Right there's a the tank car expert. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. Yep. Very, do you have anything to add with the tank well, car? I'm, I'm just very pleased to see these cars. They've done a beautiful job. Um, several of us worked with Bill Schneider very closely. Okay. To, uh, get the things right and it, it looks very right to me that's awesome yeah. so very cool very hey the expert says it's right so i think you definitely need to get some <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so I, I was ready to finish up with that, and then he said there's more stuff. There's more. So I can wait. There's more. That's right. So um, on this table, uh, we have our GP9 RM and slug. Um, we have our GP9 RM and slug units here for Canadian National. These are the very first samples that we just got. Uh, Dan Darnell is still working on some refinements in the molds and everything like that, getting some details tweaked. Um, so get your pre-orders in on those. Um, then we have our whole Alco series of locomotives. Um, I'm not an Alco guy, so I can't tell you anything about Oh, them. we got a guy at the store that is an Alco. <laughs> he can tell you everything about So them. I'm just going to say, please get your orders in on the <laughs> <Yeah>. Alco. <laughs> those are cool. Well, what about the turbo train on the back? Uh, those are actually entering production now. Okay. Um, so orders are closed on that, and the delivery of those will be next year sometime. That's really cool. That's a neat. I, I bet you need a wide radius curve to make yeah. those work. Uh, yeah. I think they'll do 22. Okay. I think. Okay. So, and then we have our first samples of the NSC center beams here. Okay, uh, those look really these nice. are the first samples of those. We're working on refining some tooling. Those will be put into production probably at the beginning of 2023. Okay. Um, the uh, bulkhead cars, those are in production now. Uh, so look forward to those coming up soon. This is our new sodium chlorate car. Uh, we are closing the orders on those. Those should be going into production very soon as well. We have our Santa Fe HO scale RR56 reefer. Those have shipped. Those should be here probably in the next four to five weeks as well. And then uh, we have over here our uh, new GP38 samples. Those are the first early test shot samples of those. Uh, working on some refinements before we uh, go into full production. Probably close the order and start production at the beginning of next year on those as well. Nice. That's cool. Um, we have the auto flood hoppers. Those are out and available now. Okay. I love those cars, but I made them, so I'm biased. <laughs> So come get them, they're, they're awesome because Matt made them. And what we got over here? Then we have our uh, U25B uh, final test shot samples. These are in production now and those will be delivering next year. Okay. Uh, we have our 3800 cylindrical hopper. That was a surprise announcement that should be shipping to dealers uh, very soon, if not already. You always need more hoppers. Yep. And then, of course, our N-Scale uh, Auto Flood 3. Those are um, uh, in the container on their way to North America right now, so those should be showing up in the next four to five weeks. And then this is the N-Scale FlexiFlow hopper, and those are uh, still working on some tooling refinements. Orders are open, and... Uh, should be starting production on those later this year. I just want to say the name again, the FlexiFlow Hopper. Yeah. I, I'm digging Flexi that. <laughs> Very cool. Well, there's a lot of really neat stuff here, and I guarantee Engineer Hall is probably getting one of every one of them. So, Matt, is there anything else before I let you go? I think the other table is everything we've already talked about. All right, so there you go, Matt. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Get this horse in the Yankee Dabbler. Thanks. So our next interview is with Jason, who is the founder and CEO of Repeto Trains. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about his company and where he sees it going in the future. All right, so this is really exciting because we're here with Jason, who is the founder, CEO, everything under the sun of Rapido Trains. This is like meeting Joshua Lionel Count himself right here. This is really <laughs> cool. So uh, it's very nice to meet you. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about Rapido and kind of what your business model is and how you got into this? And all sure, that sure. Yeah, I'm, I've been a train obsessed nut bar since I was uh, two. And uh, I'll tell you, when I was going into, I did a lot of university, one of my degrees, someone said, so what are you going to do for a living? I said, what I'm going to do is I'm probably become a teacher, a professor. 
What I want to do is make model trains all day. And uh, I actually abandoned my studies to start Rapido as a model train company. Oh, okay. Um, and so uh, not a lesson for all you young yeah. folk, except what it, is, no. but what it is a lesson is, I, cause this is already a PhD. What you do is if you want to turn left and because you're not doing what you love, you got to do what you love, do what you're passionate for. So I started Rapido about 18, 19 years ago okay. um, and built it up. The Rapido specializes in crazy, absurd, detailed models um, of stuff that we at Rapido like. So I'm a modeler. I model 1980, the route between Toronto, Montreal, Canada. Okay. So it's amazing that Rapido's first like dozen or more releases were all happened to be things that you'd find on those tracks right. between Toronto, Montreal in 1980. Um, <laughs> and then Rapido, most of our employees are model trained nuts. We're model trained people. So the stuff we make is the stuff we want. Like we just announced uh, Metro Winnebago F40 units because uh, Bobby really wanted them. <laughs> that's oh, okay. that's why we announced them because nice. Bobby's a fan and he wants them. Okay. Right. So we're we're train obsessed nuts, and so people, uh, our customers, we all think along the same lines to the point where you know I, I, we're big on detail, including uh, the stuff you wouldn't even see. So uh, they say the best uh, repeal model looks best when it derails and rolls down the embankment. Then you see all the underbody detail, all those pipes, all those equipment, you know, your your D22 air brake system, your steam heat equipment, it's all there, right? Your train air conditioning equipment, it's all there. Nice. So that's good. And then even inside, you know, my favorite trains, the United Aircraft Turbo Train. We've got a model coming out of that soon. And we did a first run of that. And there's no windows in the bathrooms. Right. But if you pull up the roof, you can see the toilet, the sinks, and the two faucets, <laughs> okay, beside beside the yeah, nice. everything. It's all there. Nice. Right. So so we, we bring that passion for trains into our models. And because it's a company run by model train nuts, we understand what most model train nuts like to see in their, in their models. That's awesome. Now, is there like a, a specific project that you're like super proud of? Like that's the Rapido one I want to be remembered for? That's a tough question. Um, All of the above? <laughs> I'm, I'm really proud of, uh, we did um, uh, three runs of the Bud rail diesel car, the RDC. Okay. And um, and that was something, said, people said you should not do that. So many models have come out of that in the past. You won't, and we sold thousands and thousands of them because it was finally a model that looked and sounded like the real thing. Okay. And and very proud of that. And believe it or not, we did a model of the, um, the CN Tempo Train and Rio Grande Ski Train. Okay. These were built by Hawker Siddeley in 1968. They're these aluminum passenger cars. They're kind of ugly. And, but like they've been bulletproof. They look good, they run well, and we've had a very low return rate. So I'm really happy with those. Yeah. That's awesome, very cool. Well, uh, I mean, this has just been a great event. Now, if I were, and I think we have a diesel coming in a minute, but if I were to ask you, and you might not be able to devote, uh, you know, tell okay, us, sure. a project in the future that you hope one day to a tackle, what do you think that would be? One day? Hmm. That's a tough question. I think one day I would love to be able to do, I don't know, something something passenger and modern and really cool looking. So that's something I'd like to do. We're gonna get cool trains happening, <laughs> Rapido. That's the answer. Well, Jason, very, uh, it was awesome to meet you. Thank nice you very much you. for putting this together. And uh, buy your Rapido trains, of course. Get them a Yankee Dabbler, and uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Take care. Take care, everyone. So we did another interview with Bill, who's one of the project managers of Repito Trains. Unfortunately, the audio of that interview got really messed up just because of all the people that were talking in the background. So it was very hard to uh, understand what Bill was saying. But one of the questions I asked him was about all the funky, uh, funny sounds that they put into the Repito Trains and what makes uh, that you know, who makes the decisions about putting those things in and, and, and how do we get those things in there? And basically, Bill said, you know, it's just kind of like a little Easter egg that they throw into the project after it's finished. They say, okay, what's a little funny something that they could put in there? And he said, if you notice, it's never actually listed on any of the manuals, but rather it's just supposed to be a, like a little bit of a surprise for the owner. So when you get a train, you get the little funky sound effects that you can have there. And he said that the first thing that actually started it was one of their uh, diesel locomotives. They actually put the Mighty Mouse theme into it, and that became a really popular success with them. And so that's what uh, told them that they were onto something there and set them apart from all the other manufacturers and start putting them in their engines. And I think it's a really neat treat to have that in there. 
So our last interview actually came from uh, by surprise. I was looking at the model train area that they had, and a gentleman came up to me. His name was Bryson, and he said he was a fan of what we do at Yankee Dabbler and the, the videos. And here I got to talk to him and found out he actually works for Model Railroader. So I figured we'd do a little bit of an interview with Model Railroader and see what's uh, going on with them and see all the latest and greatest things that you can get from that publication. So hi, I'm here with Bryson from Model Railroader, and guess what? He actually watches the videos. They work. We're, we're, they, they do. We are big. This is like New York Times big right here. So can you tell us what's going on with Model Railroader? Anything new with the uh, magazine publication? What's going on? Well, I, uh, I encourage you guys all to check out our weekly segment, Midday Modeler, on Trains.com. Okay. Where we uh, might not have the same uh, parody, you know, funniness as you, but we try to <laughs> give modelers tips and tricks uh, through a very fun interactive displays okay um, and you know sometimes we go out and explore a little bit like we were at Rochelle Illinois last week for Midday Modeler okay where we uh, met up with our trains.com crew for crew for their trains live little show and it's just we, we like to have fun bring bring some excitement and joy into the hobby that's awesome and of course if you're already not a, uh, a subscriber to Model Railroader please make sure that you get in co uh, contact with them get that subscription going to your uh, to your house right here is it now I'm assuming it's available online as well as in the print form yes you can do online you can do print and you can do both I think very nice so you can double it up so Bryce it was awesome meeting you nice and to meet you subscribe to Model Railroader get that magazine go to your house today and watch those Yankee Dabbler videos hey double plug <laughs> All right, so I hope you enjoyed our uh, trip to the Illinois Railway Museum. It was a lot of fun getting caught up with all the people from Repito as well as seeing all the displays that they have at the Red Museum. Of course, static display and the operational equipment as well. You know, a lot of times we see these things in model form like a GG1 or a Little Joe or an S3. But when we actually see them in real life, it really takes it to the next level. And I highly recommend it if you've ever had the opportunity to get out here to check it out and see the Illinois Railway Museum. A lot of really fun things there. If you're not already uh, subscribed to Engineer Hall's channel, make sure you click that subscribe button to get caught up on all the latest and greatest things we have coming up. You know, in the past, we did the Spring Layout Spectacular. We did the Fallout of Stravaganza. And we have a plan to do something for the winter that might involve our holiday display. So stay tuned for more information about that. Well, we'll see you next time at Yankee Dabbler, where, of course, every day is in train show. So until then, my name is DJ. Thanks for watching. And take care, everyone. Bye-bye.